service. And uh, this service is geared for pastor appreciation. Thus is why I'm up here. And uh, I hope you don't get nervous when I'm up here. I'll try to keep my hyperbole to a minimum. And, uh, but I do want to say that I appreciate all our pastors. Uh, Scott, Brother, Brother Loper, I'm sorry, Brother Loper, Brother Stettler, and Brother Stroud, and their families. And uh, what a great example for us to follow. And the theme for tonight's service is three generations, one unchanging message. And isn't that an awesome thought? That there is an unchanging message that, uh, that they are presenting. And Brother Sankey represents another generation and uh, same truth. But uh, tonight we're going to focus on our pastors. Three generations, one unchanging message. Let's uh, stand and open the service with prayer. Brother Dwayne Cousinberry, would you uh, please open with prayer this evening? Our Father, we are grateful to be here together yes. tonight in your presence and with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the stated purpose that's been given for this time together tonight. We're thankful for Christ, who is the head of the body and the Lord of the church. We're thankful also, Father, that you saw in your providence to give to us shepherds, under shepherds, really, who will uh, feed us and guide us and carry burdens for us and uh, walk beside us and lead us. Thank you, Lord, for each of these men, their wives, their families. I pray your blessings upon this time tonight as we do what your scriptures compel us to do, and that is to give honor to those who honor us do. And so we just ask your blessings on our time together tonight in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, Brother Arnder is coming to lead us in the congregational singing. And hopefully most of you got a, a, uh, a song passed out to you before the service. So we'll use that sometime today. All right. Turn your handle to number 490. All the way to my Savior leads me. Our uh, theme tonight in the songs is leading and following. Fanny Crosby did not write a song about the Strouds or the Stepplers in this regard, so we're going to fill in with this song. I'm glad we have a Savior that leads us and that we can follow. He'll lead us to heaven. Amen. Before I...
I first met Daryl Stetler, I believe, it would have been at Rogersville Camp many years ago. And uh, I don't know what year that would have been. Uh, a long time ago, I was just probably in grade school, I would say. I don't know if Cheryl would have been even alive at that time. Probably not. But um, anyway, and then Andy, I met at uh, UBC when I was in college. He was eighth grade. I don't want to date myself here. It's too late, I guess. But uh, over the years, I appreciate their faithful leadership, and I have I have nothing bad to say about them, and I have uh, never heard anything bad about them. Now that I think about it, but uh, I appreciate their faithfulness, and and it's uh, in our society, it's rare to find that good leadership that uh, is faithful and stays the course, and you can depend on day in and day out. All right, you should have gotten a, a song passed out to you, Footprints of Jesus. This is new to me, um, so hopefully some of you know this. I'm going to try this out and see what happens here. Number 107. <laughs>
unspoken request by raised hands. Aren't you glad God knows exactly what that raised hand is about? And uh, he won't go blabbing it to anybody else. He might whisper their, your name to them to pray for you. But uh, he knows exactly how to answer each and every prayer. All right, anyone else? All right, let's stand and Brother Local, Brother Local will lead us in prayer and let's join him as he does so. Father, we thank you tonight for your main blessings on us. We're so glad that we can come to your house and worship you. We're so glad that we're not limited in time and space, that your ways are higher than our ways. And Father, when we look at situations, we have our opinions and we have our songs. We're so glad that you know the beginning from the end and you know, Lord, exactly what is needed in each and every case. And we come to you tonight because we recognize our inadequacies and we recognize our deficiencies and we recognize that, that uh, we are frail humans, but you are divine. And, and uh, our problems are no match for you. And so tonight we come to you in faith, reaching out to the one who spoke this world into existence, the one who the loss us a doubt that you sent your son to die on the cross. And so it's with confidence and courage that we come into your presence. And Lord, we come as little children tonight and we bring the needs that are before us as a congregation and we ask that you would help each one. Father, you know all about every single burden that is being carried here tonight. And you saw the many hands that were raised. And Lord, I pray that you would go alongside each one. That you would minister grace to them, Father. I pray that they would find you to be their sustainer and their keeper. May they find you to be their guide without something, direction, and guidance. And we pray that you would grant that to them. We're so glad that you see tomorrow as clearly as we see the present. And we're so glad that you are the faithful guide. You're the gentle shepherd that guides and leads and directs us. Lord, we commit our ways to you. Lord, there are some here tonight that, that have physical needs, and I pray, oh God, that you would touch each one. You know, Lord, about those concerns, and we pray that you would be with them as well. We read in your word where you heal the sick, and you touch blind eyes, and you touch my legs. And Lord, we believe that you can still do that tonight, and so by faith we reach out to you, asking that the great physician would one more time touch the needs that are for us. Father, I pray that you would be with those that have material needs. We thank, Lord, of uh, perhaps job situations and then the winter of pain situation. We pray, oh God, that you would work that out according to your plans. We ask, Lord, that you would receive glory in that situation. Father, I pray that you would touch uh, spiritual needs, Lord. We have loved ones who need you, and we pray, oh God, that your faithful Holy Spirit would continue to move and draw to yourself. We pray, Lord, that you would be with folks in this service that have spiritual needs. We ask, oh God, that you would touch their heart. Lord Jesus, more than anything, we want our lives to be an offering of praise, an offering of gratitude towards you. We want to live our lives to your glory and to your honor. And so, oh God, if there's anything in our lives that are not pleasing to you, we ask that you would turn the holy spotlight on our souls and search every crevice, Lord. Don't leave anything outside of the inspection of the Holy Spirit. We pray, oh God, that you would help us to be people that are kingdom-minded. Lord, as we spill from this congregation tonight to go into our world, May we not put our Christianity on a shelf somewhere, but, oh God, may we yeah. live in work clothes. May yeah, we exist in Christ yeah. so that the world around us are drawn to you as a result. And so, Lord, we pray that our attitudes and our actions and our ambitions and our dreams and our wants would all be surrendered and laid at your feet tonight. Lord Jesus, have your right away in the service. We think of our pastor. Oh, God bless them. You know the loads that they carry. You know the unspeakable burdens that they have on their heart. You know the tears and the sleepless nights they spend. And, oh, God, I pray that you would bless them for that. I pray, oh, God, that you would bolster them, that they find your presence real. May they find your grace enough. May they, may they find the encouraging hand of the Lord resting on them. Father, be with us in the remaining part of this service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Aren't you glad for the privilege of prayer? Yes. And I thank God for His presence. And knowing that He hears our prayer. And uh, so thankful for that this evening. Making some announcements. Um, don't forget, local IHC is November the 1st through the 4th. Uh, there will be no Wednesday night service here. So if you show up, uh, take Strouds or Stedlers out to supper or something. <laughs> but uh, you won't, we won't have service. Uh, or come into sanctuary and pray for the IEC. Uh, then Friday night, we're going to be hosting the local IHC. So don't forget that. And that service starts at 7 p.m. Is that the pre-service? Okay. And the pre-service starts at 7 p.m. And I'm not sure. Do we know who's speaking in that pre-service? Kyle Johnstone. Kyle Johnstone. All right. Good deal. And uh, so you be here Friday night at 7 p.m. And then after the service Friday night, we're going to have a time of fellowship. And uh, we're going to meet down in the fellowship hall and bring items to go with soup, uh, crackers, cheese, whatever you think goes with soup. Uh, you might bring the wrong things the wrong soup. I don't know. But bring something you think goes with soup, not just yourself. Bring something that goes with soup. And that'll be a great time. Don't you enjoy meeting with God's people? And uh, you better, because <laughs> we're going to be in heaven together. <laughs> uh, everything will be fixed there, though. Uh, so uh, remember that. Friday night, 7 p.m., the local IHC service will be here. No prayer meeting here Wednesday night. Uh, and then November the 6th, uh, the baby bottles, I think it's Carol Gardner from the Pregnancy Center, uh, is the last day to you need to return those baby bottles. So fill them up and bring them back, and that'll be a blessing to that ministry. And then November the 6th, the PM service is youth involvement service, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, so young people, you participate, and if he asks you to do something, do it. Right, Scott? <laughs> so uh, remember that. November the 6th is youth involvement service. Uh, November the 13th, well, we have a lot of announcements, don't we? November the 13th, the Crestlands will be here in the PM service. So remember that and come prepared to give to them. Uh, November the 15th, uh, Seniors and Friends. Uh, I'm not sure where that's at, but don't go in the corral. All right, so remember that. And the time, 2.30, 12.30? 11.30. All right, so remember that. And <laughs> I'm tempted to show up, but... Uh, I'm a senior, but I'm going to be able to claim me as a friend. <laughs> but uh, I've been tempted to show up to that. Uh, and then also, a pumpkin roll bake sale. And I think this is to raise money for the youth department. So, see Scott or Patty. I think they're both making pumpkin logs. <laughs> so, see them and uh, about buying a, a pumpkin log. Now, some people might not like it, but uh, you can buy it to give to somebody else for Thanksgiving or whatever. And... Uh, they are very good, so remember that. Okay, is there any announcements I'm forgetting? I better look at my wife. I don't want to see her. She's back there. Okay, I don't think so. All right, so remember those uh, announcements. Okay, we're going to transition into uh, our pastor appreciation segment, and uh, the next state, next segment: uh, Anthony Paulus, Felicia Staley, Byron, and Jennifer Scott. If you'll make your way to the front. Uh, they're going to have a little speech in about the footprints of Jesus. And remember, our theme tonight is three generations, one unchanging message. You can come up here if you would like. The Bible is unlike any other religious book. Despite having 40 authors writing from three continents over nearly 2,000 years, it maintains a perfect consistency of message. Yet despite this marvelous array of topics, the Bible displays a flawless internal consistency. It never contradicts itself or its common thing. How does this apply to Pastor Appreciation Sunday, you might ask? The answer is God. The same God who protected his message and entrusted it to all those authors 
is the one who called the men on our pastoral team. He has instilled within them the same message of salvation, of forgiveness of committed sin, of cleansing from inbred sin, of growth and grace. Even though the messenger standing at the pulpit varies from service to service, the core message is the same. We are deeply grateful for the men and their wives who make up our pastoral team and faithfully proclaim the same sweet old story of Jesus and his love. Several scriptures come to mind when we think of our pastors. The first is Matthew 4, 19. Jesus called to his disciples, and he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Another speaks to the consistency of the message of our pastors that our pastors maintain in word and life. Proverbs 2.20 says, That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of righteousness. Our pastors obey the admonition of Paul to Timothy, who was his son in the faith. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee Keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us, 2 Timothy 1, 13 and 14. Our pastors undoubtedly prayerfully echoed the desire of the Apostle Paul when he wrote 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. They sense the weight of responsibility that brings to them. And they do their utmost to lead us in the path we should take. For that, we appreciate them. Amen. Glad to thank you so much for being willing to participate. All right. Uh, we have a couple other people that are going to speak. Uh, and we're going to break this down into categories of Stellar, Strouds, and Scott, our members. Uh, so, Sister Cooper, see if this is working. Sister Cooper, is it working? How about now? Sister Cooper has a saying. I'm old enough that I have known Pastor uh, Stella. While he was still a student, I first knew him when he was one of my students in a biology class at Allegheny Wesleyan College. One memory from those decades ago is of a stellar trio singing in chapel service. It was a trio composed of Reverend Kenneth Stellar, Francis Stellar, and Daryl Stellar. They may have sung many different times in different songs. But I remember one song in particular, in part. The lyrics of the song are these. Let me touch him. Let me touch Jesus. Let me touch him as he passes by, so that I shall reach out to others. They shall know him. They shall live and not die. Oh, to be his hand extended, reaching out to the oppressed. Let me touch him. Let me touch Jesus so that others may know and be blessed. If Pastor Stutler meant it then as a prayer, and I have no doubt, he has prayed a similar prayer many times since. That prayer has certainly been answered. I think everyone who has sat under his ministry and experienced his pastoral care so sweetly enhanced by Regina can join me in saying Pastor Stutler's prayer has been abundantly answered. Thank you, Sister Cooper. Uh, David Weddle, we'll come up on uh, Well, I was asked to do this, and uh, I don't know if uh, you're like me, most of you is probably aren't you're used to speaking. But when I was asked, part of my brain kept saying, no, 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 no,
Anytime anybody, anybody says, will you, and my brain starts saying no. <laughs> and uh, I thought, here we go. And then she asked me, and I said, I'll try my best. <laughs> then my brain began to say, that was pretty dumb. <laughs> First off, I'm going to expect you to stand up and say something. But uh, no, I appreciate the spellers. I really do. I uh, don't have these stories like some of the others do about when I met Daryl or whatever. I think I seen him at GBS when he was younger. I do remember seeing him and Regina one time together on a bench by the ad building. I don't know if that was before you went to Salem or after Salem. And I think it was Phil Kesson who I was running around with and he stopped and he talked to him. But I hadn't really talked to him, didn't really know him other than being around the school, seeing him around the school. And I remember they came for a revival here and I appreciated the revival, appreciated them being here. Then shortly after that, they moved to the area and I'll never forget my father one day coming to me and he said, David, I've got something I need to talk to you about. He said, I think I'm at the part where I need to step aside. So I need someone to help me. And he said, I'm thinking about talking to Daryl and Regina, and I would like for you to pray about it. And I want to talk to the church board and let them pray about it. And uh, it was kind of hard to kill the swap. You know, up until we were at Hope Sound, maybe for a few months, my wife and I were. But other than that, my father had been my pastor all my life. I had seen a man who went through the fire. I seen a man who stood by the stuff. I seen a man who could get up at 3 30, 4 o'clock every morning, drink a pot of coffee and have his devotions and be on the go until late at night. And I thought, oh my goodness. The other thing I appreciated about my father was the fact that he really stood by the stuff. And when I mean he stood by the stuff, I remember when we were in the Pilgrim Homeless Church years ago and he would stand to his feet and say, no, we're not going that route. We're not going that route. And when Daryl and Regina came along, I thought, whoa, are they going to be that way? It, it really did. It bothered me. What are we getting? The other thing that bothered me was, are we going to get somebody who's not only going to be faithful and true, but are we going to be getting somebody that's really going to put their shoulder to the grindstone? And I appreciate it. They have. And they've been there. And I really do appreciate that. I know uh, times haven't always been easy. They really have. Matter of fact, when Daryl and Regina came here, they both had brown hair. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not been easy. Matter of fact, I did too. <laughs> but we do appreciate it. We really do. I, I you know, the message recently that Brother Smith gave us on the family and what it meant to protect our family. I, I tell you what, I'm thankful that we've had a pastor that we could let our kids come to church and know that there was a leadership there that someone there in front of us who they could look to, they could trust. I appreciate that. But not only in my children, I'm thankful for the leadership and for the guidance, for my own self, for my wife, for us as a family, for us as a church. Thank you for the 27 years. Thank you, Sister Kipler and Brother Weddle.
We uh, really appreciate that. And uh, mentioning Brother Weddle, I got, got a lot of good memories of him. Shame some of you did not get to meet him. Okay. Um, I believe I got my notes a little mixed up here. So I believe it's time for the special song. Um, if uh, I think it's the, uh, Anthony and his two sisters. Are his two sisters and Anthony? <laughs> special song. Yeah. Well, we have a bass player, but he's wigging out on us, apparently. He didn't have time to set it up to his liking, I guess. Um, but it suddenly dawned on me that I forgot one of our pastors as I was up there making comments, and it was totally unintentional. And I'll mark it up to forgetfulness one. Number two, he's just new. And number three, I've known him all his life. And I know all about him. So but we do appreciate Scott and Kate. And I uh, appreciate their life and their testimony. And it's good to have them on the team. We appreciate them.
thank God for his faithfulness. He is so faithful. And uh, I am so very, very thankful and blessed to call him mine. We're going to move on to Brother Stroud. So we're going to give him time to prepare for this. <laughs> uh, Brother Randy is going to speak. Uh, and Brother Witt, senior. Uh, and I've got a little snippet. Uh, you can trim Wayne. Uh, no, I remember him. My uncle, uh, Brother Melvin Wentworth, uh, pastored Andy's church when he was a kid. And uh, I remember going there. Dave and I were, we were kids, but we were older than Andy, as you can tell. But, <laughs> but I remember Andy, uh, and David can vouch for this. Uh, not that he has to, but he can. Uh, I remember Andy, I guess maybe about the age of Wilson. Probably, when they'd have an altar call, he'd be up here, walking back and forth with his Bible, just praying and helping the people at the altar. And I remember as a young man, I'm going, wow, that's pretty good. I'm not up there doing that. But Andy, I do remember that. And uh, that stuck with me all his life. And he's been faithful. He must have had a call way back then, just didn't know it. Huh? <laughs> but uh, I appreciate him. Okay, uh, Randy. I was told to be short and nice, so I try to do both of those things. Uh, Andrew, uh, as a young person, had had a contagious spirit. He just easy to easy to be around, and and my wife would go visit his mom, and we'd go play matchbox cards or basketball, or because I wasn't as mature enough to take into that adult conversation, but but. As, as we've watched Andy over the years, um, you could just see a difference about him. He, uh, he wanted to mind God, and I, I appreciate that. And uh, I guess as I was trying to think, and I didn't know actually who I was going to be speaking about until I got up here until he called me, but uh, the, uh, one, th one thing, he, he loves Jesus with all of his heart. And that, to me, is worth a lot. It could be said for every one of our pastors. Another thing, he lives life careful. He's careful the way he lives his life and uh, served with him on some committees and boards and, and there's a carefulness about him. And uh, my dad would always say Andrew's going to make it. And he reminds me a lot of my dad. He, uh, he's, he's about the same size so, and, but uh, just a lot of his man and his but one of the things about, and, and this is just not for Andrew, it's, it's also his wife, Sherilyn, and, and the Stettlers and the Lopers as well. They give generously. Yes. They, they are not takers or givers. And uh, when you put those combinations together, you find that you have a person that if he'll keep his hand in God's, and this church is so blessed to have somebody like that. I was told that Somebody was talking about a preacher, and they said, oh, your problem is you just always take up for preachers. Well, it's pretty easy when you were raised in a pastor. And uh, I remember those days that Dave talked about when Dad said, i got to step aside. You think, where are we going from here? But I appreciate their faithfulness, their generosity, their love for Jesus, and uh, also feel confident. While I don't put my trust in man, He'll keep his hand in God's hand. The church is in a good place. I appreciate all of our pastors. I want to say we appreciate all the. Uh, Pastors, and uh, I'm glad that you take strangers in from foreign places like Arkansas, and uh, we appreciate that very much. I uh, decided I would do what I have sometimes done. I have tried to write this in poetic form. Pastor Andrew Stroud serves well this Burlington crowd. Pastor Andrew Stroud makes us feel a sanctified crowd. 
Have you ever thought just how he really is? He has a sense of humor and seldom is found in a fizz. <laughs> he delegates and leads by example. His friendliness by the door is ample. To the seniors, he is quite kind. He is studious, observant, genuine. He moves along at a steady pace, a tread, I'm sorry, but most importantly, he's spirit-led. And just to add something to that, I, I already said this to Andrew privately, but I so appreciated his leadership during the revival and noticed how he was sensitive to the Lord's guidance, and I, I certainly appreciate that, my pastor. God bless all three of you. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, Brother Scott Lowe. And uh, I want to take the first thing. Uh, I want to say I really appreciate Scott. And uh, isn't he doing a fantastic job? Fantastic job. And uh, I'm not your teacher, so I don't know where you need to shape up or whatever. But from our opinion, you're doing a great job. And uh, let's give him a good experience yeah. as he helps our flock, okay? Let's yeah. don't give him an experience where he can go away and go, well, you know how to deal with this kind of person, this kind of person, this kind of person. Let us make it easy for him to be our youth pastor. And I thank him. And it's kind of on a personal note, um, my son, Chris, he's very opinionated. And uh, he can get a little sidetracked here and there. But I thank the Lord for Scott has used him in Chris's <laughs> life and help him get some of his thoughts circled back around to where they need to be. And uh, I really appreciate that greatly. And uh, I know God's going to use him. And uh, and uh, he's got a, a great, I wouldn't say a career, but you've got great opportunities in it for him. And I'm so glad that they are a part of our congregation. And I look forward to see what God has to, to do uh, in their lives. And I appreciate it, Scott. I know you're 21. I wouldn't want to have been in charge of anything like that when I was 21. <laughs> so kudos to you. Uh, and uh, God is helping you, and I know he's going to. Uh, Tim Wilson. Second Timothy. Um, <laughs> when when uh, the Lopers, when I, when I first heard that the Lopers were coming, I was just so pleased. Uh, I had good memories of uh, of Rodney at GBS. We spent just a short time there, and uh, he made a good impression on me, and still does. And um, but I remember when they first came. Oh, so silly of me. I would always address Scott in the wrong name. I never addressed him as Scott. I don't know, what did I call you, David or something? Remember that? You don't remember that? I would always go, hey, David. He's like, Scott. And I'm like, oh, dear. Don't get old. But, um, yeah, so appreciate uh, Brother and Sister Loper. And, uh, you know, Pam and I are finding ourselves with four of our seven children in the youth group now. Yeah, unbelievable, just how time flies there. And um, so that's dear to our hearts, and we, uh, we take it very seriously. And I think Pam and I both would say that, you know, the primary responsibility for the spiritual development of our children falls with us. And, but yet I'm just so encouraged to have uh, brother and sister Loper to come alongside us to, uh, to help our children disciple them, guide them, direct them. Uh, we, we think that is very valuable. And so thank you, Lord, uh, for the contribution you're having. And just may the Lord bless you, uh, give you wisdom beyond your years, and that you would, most of all, live lives that are just Christ-centered, Bible-saturated, that the hearts of our children would just be drawn to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And bless what... Uh, Baby, shine as well. <laughs> little baby is a cute. 
Yes. Just ask Brother Lover, he'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to hold her the other night, and she is a sweetheart. And God bless him, and pray for them. And uh, he's young, he's starting out, so pray for him and, and, uh, and the rest of our pastors. The rest of our pastors are a little more seasoned. They got a little more experience under the belt, but let's pray for Scott, and, uh, and uh, I appreciate it so much. All right, pastor's wives. Now, we know behind every good man, there's a good woman, right? Not all this. <laughs> but I'm glad we have that. We do have good ladies in our church as pastor's wives. If uh, Nancy Martin would come up here, you want me to bring a mic? All right. All right. And then after her, Carol, if you want to. Daniel Boone said that all you need for happiness is a good gun. A good horse and a good wife. <laughs> and I'm not sure about your guns or your horses. But um That's not for all. <laughs> but I know tonight that just even beginning Scott's new ministry and all the way through forty plus years, I know these men would not want to wake up without their wives by them to minister. And their wives have such a special place. Um, they're the wives who, when you call them in the middle of the night, they get woke up too. And if he's laying there praying, she's probably laying there praying. And when things um, hurt him, they hurt her. And when he's um, preparing for a sermon, she's praying for him, that he will get what the Lord wants for us. And um, I just thought about all the things they do. You know, I started making a list, and it was just over and over all the things these three beautiful ladies do to serve us. And it's all the way from making meals and playing the piano and singing specials, creating music lists. Uh, Sherilyn knocks down walls <laughs> and paints. <laughs> I think she can do that stuff as good as her daddy probably and just all the way through and you know I saw Kate come in with revival food they're just always looking for a place to serve and I appreciate that tonight and I can just guarantee you if there's anything that smells good or anything that's beautiful it didn't come from these three men <laughs> it came from their, their wives and <laughs> And I love you all tonight dearly. And I would just say from the congregation, thank you for everything you do, for everyone you serve, and most of all, for loving Jesus well. I'm going to start with um, Scott and Kate. Um, I uh, got my directions mixed up a little bit. I didn't read the directions carefully, so I did the pastors and their wives. So um, it was kind of hard to redo it when I found out as I walked in the door tonight. So here we go. Um, Pastor Scott Loper, God has blessed us to bring you and Kate to Burlington Church and baby Charlotte too. I do not know Scott too well, but one time I was subbing at Aldersgate Christian Academy and I think he was in 11th grade. And some of the young, it was a very full class. Um, and it was more like babysitting than teaching because I don't know what what class it was, but I was just there to crowd control. <laughs> and um, they, um, some of them decided they wanted to leave the class. Just, you know, can we go to the commons? I think most of them did not really know me I've been around GBS since I was born, so it's kind of hard to, anyhow. Um, but Scott just sat there quietly. You know, they were all making a rumpus, and he was just there. You know, he didn't, he didn't say a single word, but I could tell that he was a quiet leader. And I just so appreciated that. I, I, he stood out to me that day. Um, I um, also noticed that he was a mature leader that day. There are others, um, oh, there were, I was going to say this, there were students who were goofing off, but he was the quiet, mature leader. Um, 
this couple is the type of people that I want to lead our young people. Um, I'm so appreciative that Caitlin and Andrew get to be under them and as they teach and um, work with the young people. It's a, such a blessing to have them. Now, Pastor Andrew Stroud, a friend brought to my attention a long time ago that um, Pastor Stroud has an emphasis on prayer, um, a huge emphasis on prayer in our services. And even as I was watching one of the services that I didn't, wasn't privileged to be in last week, I noticed that Andrew said, we're not just using this time to take up the time. We're wanting to have corporate prayer to talk to God. And I just so appreciate that in him. You and Sherilyn um, have done an excellent job in so many things, but one thing that stands out to me is how you raise your children. You're good parents, and that speaks a lot to me. Um, Sherilyn's the junior church uh, leader, has been the junior church leader, and she builds relationships with kids, and later on they will come back to her and tell her what an impression they made on, that she made upon them. And that's really, really neat to me. And also, I wanted to say something to Wilson, Marshall, Carrie, and Allison. Um, they are good examples of PKs. Um, it's tough to be a kid, but it's really tough to be a PK. Um, and all the eyes are on you. All the eyes are on you. Um, now, to the Stettlers, I want to say to them, many of us remember them as the preacher evangelist or the song evangelist. I remember when I was in college, I had the privilege of hearing them in Pennsylvania at an Allegheny church. And um, Sherilyn was up there singing her little heart out. I mean, she was eight years old and just, just singing away. It was so amazing. I was so impressed. Um, I get a little nervous, I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, the pa uh, Pastor Settler has been so many things to us. His sermons are so powerful and are given under the anointing of God. And I appreciate the emphasis on holiness and holy living. And another thing both um, Regina and Daryl have been to us as a family is he, they've been to with us during some very difficult hard times. Um, I remember when Morgan had a surgery, she had several surgeries when she was little at Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, and Daryl and Regina would be there just sitting with us. And I'm telling you, those hours are long and scary when you're sitting and waiting and not knowing. And I just remember Regina just being there comforting us. And I can tell you that many families have been in that same situation that we were. And I'm so grateful for them. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, this is this is free. <laughs> um, the Stutlers and the Strouds and the Lopers have a special place in this church. They're leaders and shepherds of a flock, but they can't be everything to everyone all the time. But we are the feet and hands of Jesus, and we can help help them lighten the load so that they don't feel so burdened all the time. And I just am so grateful that they work so hard, but sometimes you might be aware of something that someone else doesn't know about, and you can be the, the person who reaches out to that person. So I just wanted to add that for free. <laughs> and the theme here has been following our pastors as they follow Christ. I would like to read that, that one verse that we did not sing because it applies to that. If they, the pastors, lead through the temple holy, preaching the word, or in homes of the poor and lowly, serving the Lord, footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow, we will follow the steps of Jesus wherever they go. We can do that. Following them is they follow the Lord.
thank you, Brother Cooper, and thanks to everyone who was willing to participate. And uh, I was thinking, sitting up here and listening to this congregation laugh about different things. I'm glad you all have a sense of humor. And uh, I appreciate the sense of humor these three gentlemen have. Scott and Dean and Stellar. If you don't know about it, I can tell you. They, uh, I appreciate that. And uh, it, it doesn't make you more spiritual in any way, but you got to have a good humor in life to get through a lot of things that happen. And uh, I want to finalize by saying I appreciate Brother Loper, Brother Stroud, and Brother Stellar. These men, if you are, uh, they continue to follow God, you can follow them right in, into heaven's gates. And we thank you. So thankful for them. So let's hold them up in prayer. And uh, if you haven't done anything for them this month, you don't have much time left. But uh, you can do something in November. You can do something in December. Do something uh, that speaks to them. Some, something, don't have to be very big, but something thoughtful. And I saw all that candy out there in the lobby. And now uh, these three generations may have three or four cavities apiece. <laughs> but uh, it, did, it did look good. <laughs> okay, at this time I want to turn it over to Brother Rick Tall. I'd like for the pastors and their wives to come forward. And uh, stand in front of the altar and look at the people. And I'm sure they won't be a bit nervous. While they're coming, I would like to uh, ask you something. How many years are there in a generation? Usually 40, isn't it? Now, as these couples gather around in front of the altar, and I'm not going to ask them, but it's interesting to me that I notice that there's approximately 20 years between each group, each couple, 20 plus years. So I'm not a mathematics major, but I think what we can gain from this, and this is obviously all of God's plan, is that we can see a 20 year overlap for a generation. And that, that kind of encouraged me as I thought about how we've had the leadership of the Stettlers, and the Strouds and now Brother Scott and his, his dear wife and family. And it's just exciting to me to think about how God overlaps and gives these individuals experience and gives them the understanding to follow after the Lord. And you're, you're always forever learning in, in, the, in the family of God. But I'm thankful for what each one of these couples represent to us. And we're, we have a little something to give for them. And then Brother Sankey is going to offer a prayer benediction. Well, I'm sorry that my extra equipment may make me look a little awkward. But I do want to make a couple of comments before we have prayer together. And if I sense anything out of our service tonight, I think I'm sensing a great lift, a great wave of appreciation and love uh, for this pastoral family that God has sent to us. And, uh, all right. And, uh, hello. <laughs> that is live, isn't it? Um, God has sent us, I think, uh, a remarkable pastoral team. Yeah. And I personally want to say thank God that he has. And thank God that he has brought you and me as a congregation together to be pastored yeah. by these people. Amen. Yeah. And uh, many, many things that I'd like to say. I, because of my hearing problem, I haven't caught everything that has been said. But uh, I just want to express appreciation to our pastors for their spiritual orientation. I have no time for a lot of entertainment, but I have a deep need for somebody to watch for my soul. 
And so I appreciate the kind of orientation that our pastors have. I looked at them while the service was going on, thinking about the parents of each of these, which add that extra generation uh, of holiness people. And I thought about uh, Daryl, especially, I should say pastor, I try not to call him Daryl, I try to call him pastor, and pastor, and pastor, <laughs> in order to show what I think is proper respect. But uh, I think Brother Stetler was born the year, my first year at God's Bible School. So we have had literally a lifelong acquaintance. And uh, I thought about his mom and dad and the what they started. And we now have the benefit of uh, that uh, holiness heritage. And so for all of these that are here, so I want you to join with me in prayer that God will bless them and guide them so that they can guide us. Because however you feel about it, I feel like I need a lot of help. And so I lean hard on our pastors. Would you stand with me please and join me in a prayer of uh, supplication to God that he will bless them and help us to be the kind of congregation that we ought to be. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful tonight that we have the opportunity of being in the house of God. Thank you for bringing this congregation together, not just tonight, but here we are, basically, this is our, this is our group of congregants here at Burlington Bible. And we thank you for bringing us together. And we thank you for our pastors. Lord, there is no way for us to express deeply enough the appreciation we have for men and women of dedication and spirituality and vision and prayer and care. But we want you to know that we appreciate it. And we pray for them. Oh God, we pray that you'll be with them, that you will anoint them, that you will guide them so that they can guide us. Lord, that thou wilt uh, enlarge their minds to have a vision for our church that we may know where you're leading us. We pray that the Spirit of God might rest upon them in anointing and, and in, in wisdom and in knowledge and, and understanding. God, give them everything they need to provide leadership for this congregation. And as has been said, I pray for us as a congregation that you'll help us to be good sheep of the sheepfold, that we may hear and understand the shepherd's voice, our local shepherds, and follow them as they follow Christ. We commit them now into your care and pray that you'll lead them in the way that you want them to go. In Christ's name and for his sake, amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated for a second. I don't know. They might want to, you guys want to say anything? <laughs> no? All right. <laughs> Just stay right there, though. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. All right, we're going to have, um, we're going to come around and shake hands. So if we want to head to this, the, uh, the west side of the church, and then come up this way and shake hands, and then you can consider yourselves dismissed. All right?